Hi guys, today we're going to be having a look at the transverse abdominis using the QSONO Q6. We've got the patient set up here in what we're going to be looking at as static contractions of transverse abdominis. And then we're going to also have a look at some more functional positions and see how you can use real-time ultrasound to measure transverse abdominis function, internal oblique function, while the patient's doing some functional activities. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up our patient. So if we hit this little patient button here on the Q6 unit, we can enter a name, and that's going to allow us to go back and have a look at these images over time and see how the patients are they're improving or not improving, and also to be able to show them as well. So apart from just being able to, for us as physios to see what the transverse abdominus is doing on ultrasound, it's also a really good tool for the patients to be able to see what's happening on the inside for some very specific muscle contractions, but also to hopefully understand what those muscles are used for and whether or not they're working properly. So typically we'd have the ultrasound unit facing both the therapist and the patient so that everyone can see. For this video, we're just going to have it facing the camera here. Now that I've entered the patient information, we're going to start off by selecting the right probe. You can get a pretty good image a lot of the time using a linear probe for transverse abdominis. For most patients though, you're probably better off using a, a convex probe like this, which has a lower frequency and better penetration. So we're going to choose our preset for abdominal here. Now the way to align yourself with the probe is that this little dot here is the left hand side of the screen with the ultrasound image here. And we're going to put this little dot always either on the patient's right hand side or we're going to put it facing their head. So the best place to put your probe to get an image of transverse abdominis and internal and external oblique is between the iliac crest and the bottom of the ribs and just coming laterally to the mid auxiliary line. So in this case, we're going to find our transverse abdominis about here. The next thing that we have to do is adjust the depth. So the transverse abdominis, internal and external oblique, are only taking up this very small section of the screen here. So if we bring our depth in using our depth button, we'll be able to see all three layers on the screen here. The next thing that we're going to do is adjust the frequency. If we change the frequency from general where it is here at the moment to a higher resolution, we should be able to get a clearer image. Here it is on the highest resolution for this setting. I'm also just going to turn down the brightness or the gain a little bit. And there we have a clearer image of the transverse abdominus at the bottom internal oblique and then above that external oblique and this layer up the top here is just subcutaneous fat. So with transverse abdominus imaging we're interested in two things. We're interested in does the uh, transverse abdominus thicken? Are they able to do a contraction and does it contract when they do an active movement? And likewise of the internal oblique, does it thicken too much and uh, is it able to be relaxed or relatively relaxed compared to an overactive internal oblique? The other thing we're interested in is does the transverse abdominus slide? Because for some people with chronic lower back pain, their transverse abdominus might thicken okay but when they're doing the functional activity, it doesn't slide underneath the internal oblique. So it's not functioning the way that it should in normal healthy people. So easiest way to do this is to get your probe position somewhere between the iliac crest and the bottom of the ribs, put it in the mid-axillary line there, and just come across until you feel like you have an adequate picture of your transverse abdominus internal and external oblique. Then you can use your split screen mode to take a picture of the transverse abdominus while it's relaxed. So let's do that, just take a breath in. And then on the outward breath, we're gonna freeze the image. We can then use our calipers to measure the thickness, but I'll do that in a moment. The next thing I'm gonna do is have a look at when it's relaxed, so I can save myself a little bit of time in the measurements. So 
So can I now get you to contract your transverse abdominis? Perfect. Okay. So now we're going to measure them and we're going to have a look for the difference here. So a normal healthy individual should be able to increase the thickness of their transverse abdominis by around about 20% with an active contraction. And here I'm just measuring in between the fascia lines so that we're not measuring fascia, fascia. we're just measuring muscle. And we'll get our result up here on the screen. We also want to compare the left side to the right side and we can do this using the split screen mode as well. We can also use the same kind of function, the four screen mode, to measure and have a look at the difference between left and right side. So here we are relaxed. Let's get you to do a TA contraction for me, please. Okay, then we're going to swap to the other side and we're going to get measures of the right hand side TA thickness. So we're going to keep our probe in the same position. Just take a breath in and out. And can I just get you to contract your TA again for me? So we can use that to compare contracted and relaxed left hand side and right hand side. Now we want to have a bit of a look and see what happens. So I'll just unfreeze everything and go back to our normal B mode. We want to have a look and see what happens when the patient is trying to do an active movement without necessarily thinking about transverse abdominis, internal oblique, etc. So we put the probe back on the patient and I'll just get you to relax your legs, bring them straight out for me. Perfect. We're going to use the split screen mode again so that we can have a look at movement and we're going to be having a look at two things. We're going to be having a look at thickness and we're going to be having a look at fascia slide as well. So to do this, we're going to make sure that we can image the fascia. Okay, we go into split screen mode. And we're going to keep the probe in exactly the same position. What I'll get you to do now is just lift up your left leg for me, please. and hold it there, and come back down. Thank you. So here we can see measures of thickness. The best way to have a look at how far the fascia is actually sliding is to use standard B mode, put a marker on your transverse abdominis, right where it starts. So we put our little caliper here just above the trackball, we're going to put it right here where the TA starts. Then I'm going to slide it across to where I think it might go. Can I just get you to try and contract your transverse abdominis again for us? Thank you. And I'll end up putting a marker right where it actually went to. That gives us a distance measure and it shows us that the transverse abdominis is sliding and it's sliding quite well. So now we've got the patient standing up, we're going to be asking them in a moment to do some functional exercises and we can see that the transverse abdominis, internal oblique and external oblique are all on the screen here. What I'm doing here is I'm going to use my hand, my fingers on the patient's body just to make sure that the ultrasound probe isn't moving too much and we can have a look at what's happening to them when they're doing some functional activities. So in this case, what we might try to begin with is make sure everything's relaxed. Just switch off all the muscles for me. Breathe in and out, nice and relaxed, perfect. Okay, here in this position, we might just save an image. 
so that we know what they look like in relaxed mode. The next thing we'll get them to do is to put a little bit of weight, and I'll stop it here, just lift up your left leg and put a little bit of weight onto your right. Let's have a look at what happens on the right hand side when you do that. So we can observe the patient here doing some functional activities. I might just get you to switch on your TA again for me please and relax and switch on again and relax. So if you find that the patient in this position is using too much emphasis on internal oblique for example, you can use your calipers as a biofeedback tool and you can put them on your internal oblique just like this. Ask your patient to do some functional activities. So could I just get you to lift your left leg right up for me? And I want you to watch the screen and make sure that the internal oblique here doesn't move outside of those markers there. So that's something that you can do with the patients as a biofeedback exercise and also as a way of monitoring if they're doing the exercise well or not and relax. And you can see there we're just moving a little bit outside the markers. So